بسم الله بسينك يا سينك ايوه يا ذهبرتا هادي انكو بالله وباله وحجاب انت It starts from that pattern of the heartbeat. Slow, and then it goes fast, and then you slow down again. And then it, like, you can spice it up in the middle, have a conversation, like the way you stop, and then you can twitch your body, and you know, the way the dancer reacts to the drummer. It's, 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 yeah, it's a conversation. The rhythm is, a, is something that's never always the same. You're not going off of a sheet, <laughs> it, but it's in us, it's in our DNA. Um, even if you're like me and you weren't born on the land, it's, it's there, it'll never go away. My name is UC and my relationship to roller skating is through dance and rhythm. I saw Livy skating uh, two years ago at a after party, after hours party, and she was doing it on a dance floor inside, and it was cool to really, really see that. I got inspired, so I hopped on the skates. I've been dancing, roller skating dancing. I've been dancing probably for less than like six months put together. I've been on and off. Dancing in general, I've, I've been doing that since I was 10. I love dancing. Uh, my relationship to dance is through many forms. Really, it starts with culture. Like I got to be introduced to um, Borambur, which is done now mostly at uh, special events, weddings, Uh, but it's a knowledge that's it's movement that's passed down from daughter to um, from mother to daughter um, and Yeah, and then from there it's it's mental health. I like moving my body. It makes me feel good. It allows me to be aware of who I am and It's a conversation between my body and myself. I made the connection with dance and mental health back in 2016. I went through a very dark place, uh, the darkest, bottomest space of my life, I could say. Dancing kind of allowed me to have, to in tune with my body without having to use words. And there's times when you're processing emotions and you don't know what to say or I don't know what to say. I use dancing as that, so yeah, 2016. A way to like get myself up and motivated on a daily basis. I, it's, it's a routine, it's part of breathing for me. If I'm not moving my body and, you know, whether it's rhythmically or just like shaking it out, it's, it's a daily routine, it's there. It's to keep get me moving, it's to say hello. <laughs> I see dancing as culturally, it's a way to pass down knowledge. Um, and then for myself, it's there to benefit me in being able to pass down that said knowledge to the next generation. It's not just for myself, but it is also including me. It's, it's uh, me learning that knowledge and wanting to pass it down is for a selfish reason. I want to know where my roots are from. I'm from Somalia, and basically, I'm the first generation of my family to be born outside of my land because of the civil war that happened back in 1991. So I didn't get the pleasure of growing up around people who looked like me. I was born in Yemen, raised all over Asia, we traveled. Our, my mom's intention was to go to Australia where my dad tried to make a better life. 
yeah, I, I try to hold on to my culture and my language even through that process of not being on my own land because that's something that my mom uh, went out of her way to make sure that I was, it was engraved in my, in my brain. My roots are everywhere. I'm all over the world. <laughs> now I'm here in Canada. Yes, my Somali culture definitely has a relationship with my dance movements. Like, we wear bellies, we shake. Y'all call it twerking now, but we shaked our ass and we call it Nico. Um, that is, we have songs that, like, teach either the older generation, the younger generation to move and move their hips and ground those roots. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's there. It is very easy to translate a dancer's skill to roller skating because you get to work out the core and because I'm able to work out that core, I'm, I have a better balance and I have a better awareness of my body, which translates very well on those, on those um, wheels. So I, I actually don't know how to like roll fast because of that, it's more of, so like roller derby, getting there, I can't do that, but stay in one spot and like skate and balance and roll and like spin and go on the ground, that's something I can do because of dancing. The healing for dancing and the healing for roller dancing, right now they're on different level because I'm more comfortable dancing without wheels. Um, so I'm being able to train myself to do more complex moves when I'm just dancing without the wheels. But dancing with the wheels, I'm training new paths for my brain. So that's, that's very healing in the sense of it keeps my like, memory elasticity better. It allows me to have courage in my day-to-day -day life because being on wheels kind of like scares you from falling. And, when you challenge that fear, you get to have more of a courageous outcome with the rest of your life and how we make decisions. Yes. There is a relationship between poetry and dance. There is a relationship between all of the arts. They all tell a story. Um, it's, it's all of it is to give space to be heard and to be given space to express. The freedom to express is an amazing human experience that I, I believe we should explore more. Um, and that's what these spaces do. Chillin' with the Hearts started out as an event to honor my mom's life. Um, it, the, the first event we ever had was not actually poetry. It was um, having nude models come through. We had a DJ which came through to bring the good vibes in. So that changed the, the attention from um, I want it to be accessible what people learn in school um, when it comes to art during that time. But I also wanted to celebrate my mom's birth because she passed away the same year, I believe, um, that we started Chilling with the Hearts. And now it's transformed into being a poetry event because we change with well, we flow, like everybody learns to grow and change and Kaz brought in this opportunity through a amazing space that hosts us every bi-weekly on Tuesdays. The space is called Masao Cafe. They have amazing food. It's delicious. It smells like home when you walk in. The owner was like, I'm all about community and invited Kaz in and Kaz was like, well, I, he's like, yo, do you, do you have capacity? Do you want to run something with it? And also suggested that I bring in two femmes who are, you know, doing the work in the background with me, both Jiva and Latifa. 
have been there giving me the energy that I need to keep going, even though sometimes I complain. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's to fill in the need. It's a community that's coming together. All these people are like, I have this capacity. Let's make something happen. So creating a space for youth to come and read their poetry for a event to come through for free. It's an accessible, it's family friendly. I'm interested to see how far it can get. And it's been inspiring to see the youth that do come through and, you know, have said their first words for the first time on stage when you see that and you're like, oh my God, I remember me when I was in that position. And to be able to give somebody else that same opportunity warms the heart. It's, it does something here that you're like, uh, that's why we're here. That's why we, we do these things. No, it's being able to like achieve, not the falling down part. It's more of, oh, I'm able to go around this area because I trust myself to do this. It's, it's the same nerve, right? Like you're, you're training your, um, the nerve that we call courage. If you're not training that, then we're always going to have, we're always going to be in fear. And then that leads to anxiety. Anxiety leads to paranoia. Mental health <laughs> goes down. So it's all, it, it connects. It connects to the maintaining of being a human who's there and capable and understands or understands that they're capable. So, Am I out of the darkness that I was in? No. The not so simple answer is like with with light, shadow follows too. So like even though it's sunny, you're you're gonna have shadows, you're gonna have the darkness. Um, I have a different awareness now of when I do get to those dark places, when I do get into like, oh, I don't. I don't like myself or I don't feel good or I get to ask the question of like, maybe there's something here. I don't think, it's like grieving. You don't really stop grieving. Like I, I didn't stop grieving. I'm just in different stages of it. And then sometimes I go back to the same thing and I'm crying in the middle of my kitchen <laughs> and I just allow it. I, I have compassion for it. I, well, since my mom's passing, I put out the intention that I would grieve with gratitude. Because of that, I'm honoring her by taking space that she's giving me. That woman knew how to take space while she was alive, and that energy itself is, is, is potent, and I believe that there is a reason why she's a strong Somali and she love to sing and she loved to dance and um, I believe for her she did it just for the joy of it around the house when she's cleaning that in my head I was like I want to do that 24 7 because I see so much happiness I see so much joy so me being an artist is honoring her joy or honoring that memory of her being in her joy there is a reason why she taught me how to do Brambur Niko and I'm able to pass that down. And everybody who I've come across um, see this like love and compassion in me. And that comes from her. Like she's, she's, she, I would say this all the time where I would say I would be a psychopath if it wasn't for my mama's love. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be who I am without her.